If you and a friend were playing catch outside and you threw the ball over your friend's head, would the ball keep rolling forever once it hit the ground? Of course not. The ball would come to a complete stop after rolling a few feet on the grass. Why do you think this is? What is it about the interaction between the ball and the grass that causes the ball's motion to stop? The answer is friction. Friction is the force created when two objects rub against each other. This force applies to all objects. Friction always acts in the opposite direction of an object's motion. There is friction between your jacket and your t-shirt. There is friction between an airplane and the air through which it flies. There is even friction between your skin and the water in the ocean when you go swimming. Friction can be broken down into three specific categories. Sliding friction, rolling friction, and fluid friction. Sliding friction occurs when two solid surfaces slide over each other. Sledding illustrates this type of friction perfectly. When you sled down a hill covered in snow, the solid bottom of the sled slides across the solid packed snow. Another example of sliding friction is built into the word itself, a slide. When you go down a slide, the solid of your body moves across the plastic or metal material of the slide. The second type of friction is rolling friction. Rolling friction occurs when an object rolls across a surface. The opening example of a ball dropped on the ground is an example of rolling friction. A bicycle is another great example of rolling friction. Imagine you are cycling down a street. If you stop pedaling and just coast, your bicycle's wheels will eventually roll to a stop. Without more pedaling, the friction of the wheels against the ground will stop the bicycle's motion. The final type of friction is fluid friction. Fluid friction occurs when a solid object moves through a fluid or a gas. Have you ever had to walk home in a storm? The strong winds likely made it difficult for you to move forward. When you are outside in a storm, the fluid friction between you and the air is increased. A swimming pool is another great place to study fluid friction. When you are in a pool, there is constant friction between your body and the water. Because the force of the friction slows you down, you have to paddle constantly. If no friction were present, you could glide all the way across the pool with one stroke. All three types of friction act in the opposite direction of an object's motion. However, each type differs in how the friction is created.